A national emergency has been declared in the Philippines by President Gloria Arroyo in an effort to quell an alleged coup plot by military officers. On the line now from the Philippines is Global Radio News reporter Dean Bernardo. Good afternoon to you. Good evening, as it probably is in your case. Yes, uh, good afternoon to you there in Dublin. Now, h- how serious is this um, apparent coup plot? I mean, is it for real? Well, uh, the rumor of a coup has been going on since uh, last year when uh, Mrs. Arroyo uh, was accused of uh, cheating in the 2004 elections. The coup is imminent. It's been, it's, it's real and it's possible. And uh, as of last night, the government said that uh, there was actually an attempt against uh, the administration of Mrs. Arroyo. Now, this national emergency that has been declared, what are the practical effects of that? Well, basically, it's, uh, the government explains it as something like as a, an emergency when there is a, uh, there is a weather disaster occurring in the country right now. But, you know, its implications right now is that it invokes its authority to, uh, as like evidence today, suppress any public gathering or rallies uh, which is uh, considered uh, against the government. And uh, other than that, the, go- the government is, uh, is privileged to arrest people or conduct warrantless arrests. And what's actually been happening on the streets? I gather some people, several thousand, have, have defied the government ban. Yes, yes, because coincidentally today and tomorrow is the celebration of the 20th anniversary of the People Power Revolution, which ousted Ferdinand Marcos in 1986. So when the government uh, ordered a cancellation of all approved public rallies commemorating EDSA or the People Power, uh, everybody still went onto the streets and continued with their with their rallies and their and their gathering. And uh, the government made uh, sure that uh, it would impose its rule, and uh, they they dispersed a lot of uh, rallies. Uh, in one rally at EDSA, the main artery here in Metro Manila. Uh, about uh, 70 people were arrested uh, or were invited to uh, go to the police station. But do you believe that there's any great um, threat to President Arroyo's position at the present time, or is she just being very cautious about the need to, as she sees it, uh, nip any uh, dissent in the bud? Well, one thing is so peculiar about yesterday. The government said this itself, uh, said this in the morning when they did the press conference. There is this Brigadier General who leads the elite scout rangers of the Philippine Marines. He actually spoke to the the, uh, chief of staff of the armed forces and said, I'm just withdrawing my support of the armed forces and with Mrs. Arroyo. And what they said, the government themselves said it, that these military officers were going to walk out into the streets with their arms and join the protest rally. Now, how do we define a coup d'etat? Is it because they're walking out and breaking off the chain of command? Or was there any actual troop movements or or military movements, as as in tanks or trucks, that move into the city. So it's a little bit hazy as of now. Yes, and you mentioned there that this is the 20th anniversary of the uh, overthrowing of President uh, Fernando Marco, Ferdinand Marcos. Um, I was surprised to read in, in today's uh, British media that, in fact, although he's long dead, President Marcos still hasn't been buried. Well, the family of uh, Mr. Marcos is uh, persistent. I've been uh, saying that... Uh, the former president, who may have been ousted in 1986, remains as a war hero during the Second World War. And he is still, or he was, an elected, a duly elected president of the Republic in 1965 and in 1969. So the Marcus family are saying we want him to be buried with national honors and at the, uh, the National Cemetery for Heroes. But the government, uh, uh, with three administrations that has passed, uh, they have been persist- they've been insisting that they cannot and they will not allow that. Uh, to happen that Mr. Marcos be given uh, honours. But I'm looking Europe. here, um, um, Dean, at, at a picture of him. He's in a glass case, looking quite well for somebody who's long dead. And his wife, Imelda, is planting a kiss on, really the, on, the, uh, on the outside. He's refrigerated. Is that the position? Yes, yes. He, he's been refrigerated in his hometown, north of, uh, north of Manila. And uh, he's been, he's been uh, well maintained. He's something like of a, a local version of Stalin and uh, Mao Zedong in, uh, in China. And how many people actually visit this mausoleum where he's maintained? Well, uh, about a year ago, when the last time I visited that area, they were saying that about uh, 2,000 people visit him about in in, in a month's time. It's like a a tourist destination in that area. Right. Well, interesting way, I suppose, of passing the time and paying tribute to people they admire. And that was uh, from the Philippines, Dean Bernardo of Global Radio News, back home with time.